This is the Gaming Audio Maniacs. So, this is Gaming Audio Maniacs 9.5, the pickup episode. Uh, English Town was fun in the summer, three months after we filmed. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, I per totally forgot what we did, how we did it. Thank God we write everything down. We That's did it for me. <laughs> we write everything down? Oops. Um, <laughs> but this is from what we can gather. This is what we got. So who wants to go? I'll go first this time. Okay. I went last last time. You're normally always last. Yeah, fuck it. I want to be first this time. On the 2600, Popeye. He's a sailor man, and yeah, that's it. Uh, N64 game, F-Zero X. Uh, not a bad game. Um, awesome, we played it a little bit after that day, I remember, and it was fun. It's F-Zero X, and they usually have good soundtracks. Game from my childhood, the Desert Strike series. The Strike series in general, jungle, nuclear, desert. On the Wii, Death Jr. Not said. <laughs> <laughs> that good. On the PlayStation 2, Mercenaries 2 World in Flames. Not as good as the first game, but Matthias is a crazy son of a bitch. He really is. He's probably the best character in the franchise, and God's honest truth, he's the only one I really cared about playing. But still, not as good as the first Mercenaries game. A game that probably not going to play too much. Spy Hunter 2, Sonic Mega Collection Plus. I am a fan boy of compilation discs in general. I just think it's awesome putting all those games on a disc so I don't have to pop them in on the Genesis anymore. I mean, yeah, more purist gameplay is on the original console, but I'm not going to go wrong for the $3 I think I got this game on, 3 for 10 deal, for like over 15 games almost. Yeah, I'm not going to go wrong with that. And they're always good games to buy. On the Sega Genesis, <laughs> Mario Andretti Racing. Generally speaking, complete-ish Genesis games for that price, I'm going to buy them. Just because it's easier to find Genesis games complete in box as opposed to any other system around here, anyway. I'm known for buying games for systems that I do not own yet. NBA Jam Tournament Edition on the 32X. It's my first 32X purchase, first 32X game in my collection, and I don't own the system. But then again, I didn't own a Dreamcast or an N64, and then I got pretty sweet bitching collections out of that, forcing me to get a Dreamcast and an N64. So, You're welcome for the N64. But thank I you, by the way. thing all the time myself, and I think I passed on that just because, yeah, I got a thing, like, sports games tend to be the first thing I pass on. I end up... And I'm not a big sports game guy, so it's like, I'll save the extra dollar or two now and but, use it towards something else yeah. that I really want. Well, that was what I got at this flea market. It wasn't a bad haul, but I wanted more cartridge-based stuff than I bought. So that was it. Um, yeah, this was my second episode. Mm, well, I had a little bit better luck. I mean, obviously not counting the auction. Um, I had better luck finding some stuff. Um, yeah, I got myself a uh, NES gun, the uh, Zapper, the gray one, no, can't find the orange one, it's uh, pretty tough to find these days. Um, I have one at home for my M8, which uh, we saw in an earlier episode. Yeah, I think you said three and I just said two and yeah. she said okay. Um, a good classic Tetris for the Game Boy. The final game that I got was... Um, Half-Life for PS2. Um, I remember playing this on PC when I was uh, when it actually came out originally, and waiting for Half-Life 2 for ages. But instruction manual, great shape, still has the warranty, and game is in perfect shape. Yeah, it's a fun fact. I bought that when it came out the day it came out on PS2, and. Um, played it through and I didn't like it. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get some hate. My opinion has changed on that. We're talking when the game came out, but uh, obviously I own the orange box set on 360, but yeah, you know, when I well, traded it in... Didn't you like, buy that just for Portal? <laughs> no, I just bought that because I because it, it's a hard, hard getting hard to find now, and 
When I traded in, the guys at GameStops were total snobs about it. They're like, oh, why are you trading this game, man? It's a great game. I was like, fuck you, and give me my store credit. <laughs> I, I definitely enjoyed it, and I haven't played it yet because my PlayStation's not hooked up, but um, I definitely look forward to when I can get back to gaming with it. I, pretty much in the time frame since we actually shot that footage, I pretty much forgot what I bought, so I'm lacking in the games. I do remember, too, I, I know I didn't come out with very many things at all, because of hard pickings, but um, I got, uh, yeah, I don't have them with me, the actual games. I know two that I got. I think it might have only been those two. Uh, Evander Holyfield boxing in the box. It was two bucks. I went, ah, screw it. I see the game everywhere, but at least it was in box complete. And I picked it up. And the other one that I've been hunting, and I mean, from Play and Trade, where we go, he's like, yeah, when we get them, they sell immediately, and it's not common. And even the flea market, I haven't seen one in years. Um, uh, one of those games I regret getting rid of. Zombies ate my neighbors from the Super Nintendo. And my other things, uh, well, these are my own personal lyrics right here. Uh, yeah, uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern, guy had these. He had a lot of games, too, but I didn't like his pricing on some of his stuff. I think he mentioned, like, a $200 yeah. for a Coleco. Yeah, 200 yeah. for a Coleco, but he was offering 25 for a working NES, and, yeah. like, it might, you might guys might scream, but like, oh, that's too expensive. We live in Jersey. This shit is really expensive around these parts. Like, I, I don't know how it is in other areas, but it's, like, super jack prices. So when I, I almost bought that NES for 25 because you don't find them that. Okay, I'm just going to say what they are now and I'll explain in a bit. Howard Stern, but Bongo Fiesta with the original 3D glasses. Yeah. yeah. That's a score. No, because these have been unused. The guy who had it basically said some of the boxes were, because like they sat in an attic since they were bought. He's like, they've never really ever been touched. And this is a rarity among Stern Show items. Howard Stern, crucified by the FCC from his NBC days. This is prior to K... Uh, 1991 it was released, but a lot of this was done, you know, just after K-Rock. And getting out of NBC, some of the bits were recorded for NBC. And I mean, this has... The inside is perfect. In the box. Set. Double cassette. In the box. This book is amazing because of the rare pictures and the information in here of his early days. Howard throws a good vibe throws a goodbye moon at a farewell party in Washington. Howard Stern wrestling women outside the studios of W4 in Detroit. If you're a Stern Show fan, I know a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people are offended by him. I lived and breathed Howard Stern for most of my life. I mean, I was going to go to New York for his final show, so this was a big deal. I don't believe in God, but I do believe in Howard Stern. Something I like to say. And, well, I already have one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And bought another one. And I bought another one at the flea market because I like this one a little bit better. Didn't it come in like, didn't the one that you bought prior come in like a few days before you bought it? No, uh, actually uh, was was it after? a month, a um, month or two. Okay. Actually like two months before. Um. <laughs> James family here. Yeah, Joe Strummer. As Joe Strummer said when he was a touring member of the Pogues, the most dynamic accordion player he ever seen. But I'm gonna try. Hopefully and one day I can get drunk and like figure out how to play a pair of brown eyes and sing it really badly. One of these days. One of these days. No. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Hopefully we entertained you with our pickups. Uh, you know, we tend, you know, finding rare stuff occasionally happens to us. We don't game hunt a lot as a trio. But when we do, we try to make the most of it. And usually, even getting there at English Town in the video, we got there at like 7 in the morning. And I think because you uh, got the, late. Yeah, because I slept late. No, we got there at 8 in the morning, that's right. I slept... When we go, we're on three hours sleep. Because we do Rocky I, Horror. I believe I stayed up all night. Yeah, you stayed I up all night. Yeah. We do Rocky Horror, and the problem with that lies in getting minimal amount of sleep. And then trying to get there as early as possible. Um, what happens is, and, it, and it's true, um, they set up at like 5, 6 in the morning, and the resellers can go through the booths that are in the back, and buy their product for the day. We're stuck with what's left. 
So that's why it's hard to find the rare stuff where we're at. But I will make a promise in the next video, that shit changes, yo. Yeah. Hopefully it won't be like months in between of release. Mm. This is the Gaming Audio Maniacs, and as always, do good gaming.